If you are living a life of toil and hardship, when you die, you rest from all that. This is why Paul was able to say, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Not that when he died he would go to heaven, because Paul was the same one that wrote all of this. He said plainly that there is a crown laid up for me on that day. Two interpretations of on that day. On that day is the day he dies, which I've just showed you text after text after text after text, that it doesn't happen when you die. The other interpretation is on that day is the last day. When Christ comes back and calls the dead from their, or, yeah, calls the dead from their graves, does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Are you able to see this? So listen, when you hear people say, "Well, I saw my 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 mom, and she died years ago. I saw my great aunt. I saw this person or that person. Who are they seeing?" <laughs> Don't be surprised because Satan and his angels can appear as angels of light to deceive. Spiritualism. Spiritualism is going to play a key role in last day events because it's going to be spiritualism that is going to unite the religions of this earth and it's going to unite the politics of this earth, the governments of this earth. It tells you in the book of Revelation that the spirits went out to deceive the nations. Those spirits are the spirits of demons and they're using spiritualism, the false belief in the state of the dead to unite church and governments to bring in Satan's last deception. You need to have a clear understanding of what happens to you when you die. And you need to be able to back that up by the Bible. Not just a verse here or a verse there. But how many verses did I give you? And I'm not even halfway through all that I got written down. But time is getting late. I hope this was enough for you to see clearly what happens to you at death. Jesus said, that the day will come, and we read this verse, when all those who are in the grave will hear His voice and come forth. Now, one last thing I want to ask you a question, and that is, King Saul, the last battle that he was going to go into, he wanted revelation from God. He wanted to know whether he was going to survive the battle or whether it was going to go bad for him. But God had already withdrew his spirit from Saul. And Saul was worried about his legacy. Would Jonathan take his throne? And God wouldn't speak to Saul anymore. And so where did Saul go? <laughs> now, who was king at the time? Saul. Why was there a witch in Endor? Because what did Deuteronomy say? And Leviticus? They yeah. said, don't let any of these kinds of people be in your midst, but destroy them. Why? Because God's a tyrant? No, because God does not want His people mixing with spiritualism, demonism. And so Saul went to the witch of Endor. And the Bible says that they conjured up Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel comes from the grave and says, Why do you disturb my sleep? <laughs> and so, those who believe in the immortality of the soul say, See, she was able to bring Samuel up. Well, man, if Samuel went to heaven, you'd think he'd bring him down. <laughs> <laughs> but if he brought him up, he might not have been in the right place. <laughs> Read that story. It never says that Saul saw Samuel. What it says is that he heard. This is how 
the devil and his angels work, and this is how they're able to impersonate dead loved ones. It is a demonic trick, one that is meant to deceive and will deceive you if you are not grounded in the faith of the Bible. It didn't say Saul or uh, Samuel came down. It says he came up. Now well, that's that's pretty important, don't you think? Also, it wasn't a prophet that called him forth. It was a witch that should never have been allowed to live in anywhere close to Israel. She was in hiding, and here comes the king, who was it's his job to put her out of the camp. Okay. What happened to Saul after this day? He died. he died. Now, don't you think if you went to a psychic and you paid them money, don't you think you would want good news? <laughs> I paid you. Give me good news. So the news was, is man, you're going to die, and the kingdom's going to be ripped from you. And sorry, did it happen? Yes. Now, how did that thing, whatever it was, that was speaking, know that that was what's going to happen? It's not, it's not hard because God had already told Samuel before he died to go anoint David because he was going to be the next king. doesn't take a genius to figure this out. Okay? That was a smart guy. He knew what was going to happen because when he went to uh, anoint David, don't you think the demons were there to figure out what was going on? This is going to be your next king. So if he's going to be king, what's going to happen to the old king? Going to die. But he also told, Samuel told Saul very plainly, when Saul stepped over his line as king and did the job of the priest, God had had enough. And God told him then that his end was coming. That's how this apparition went. Okay? So if you have any other questions about the state of the dead, feel free to ask me anything. If I can help you with the answer, I will do that. But if you cannot find these answers from Scripture, don't take my word for it. Don't take another preacher's word for it. Don't take a book's word for it. Find it out for yourself in the Word of God. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 422.
heads. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us, for the opportunity to dwell into your word, to see what it actually says about what happens to us when we die. Father, you have given us so much information, but yet there's so much deception out in this world. I pray that you will give us more than earthly wisdom, but you will give us divine wisdom. Amen. That you will help us to be worthy students of your word, rightly dividing the word so that we will not have to be ashamed when Jesus comes again. Father, use us to share truth and light in this world. Help us to be strong and not to be swayed by every strange doctrine that comes down the pipe. But help us, Lord, to be grounded firmly in Jesus Christ through his word. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.